There's a kind of an, a, a slogan which has been made much of in the last few months, which is what's called common prosperity. And the idea here is that the party has to apply itself to common prosperity. Now, there are two questions which, apply, which, which can be asked of this. First, why are they doing this? And I think the answer is that most Chinese now know that the country is unequal and that there is not common prosperity. And that the party, if it is to have its legitimacy as a communist party maintained, is going to have to do something uh, draconian about the inequalities. And that therefore, the party asserting its commitment to common prosperity is a very, very important step. But asserting its uh, uh, commitment to it is one thing, doing it is another. So now the, the party is in the same sort of position. Is it just going to simply pass a law about common prosperity? Or is it going to make it a case? All, all the signs are that they're going to experiment down that path. They've set up a common prosperity zone. Now, this is, this is interesting because in exactly the same way that capital got introduced into China by these uh, economic uh, zones in, in the south of China, so now China is saying, okay, we're going to create a common prosperity zone. And they've taken one province and said, okay, you are going to be a common pro prosperity zone. And the province is the one where Alibaba, the one of the biggest corporations in China, uh, is and, and Jack Ma and all the rest of it. Those, that, that, that's there. That's where they exist. So it's taking a, a province where there is the greatest level of, of inequality, and it's going to say, "All right, how do we reconfigure uh, this space in such a way that it can reasonably be looked upon as a common prosperity zone?" So, what that would that common prosperity look like? Now here. Uh, this is obviously going to take resources. And one of the things we've seen is that all of the oligarchs and all of the big companies have rushed to promise that they will devote huge amounts of mon money and funds uh, to this project of common prosperity and, and all the rest of it. There. And it's a bit like in this country, we have you know the Ford Foundation and so on. So there, there the, the companies are forming foundations to try to, 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 to work through uh, improvement of living standards, improvement of uh, access to education, healthcare, and housing in many of these. They, they, they've been trying to, to work on this. Uh, and of course, at that point, the party steps in and kind of says, well, it's all very well, but you're actually assembling political power by, in effect, controlling these non-governmental organizations, the, the equivalent. You're controlling them through, through your uh, philanthropic uh, enterprises. So your philanthropy has to be going through us. In other words, the party wants to control all of this. So that there's a big struggle going on as to how much corporations can keep their philanthropic operations to themselves and how much they're going to have to cede and concede to the Communist Party that the Communist Party controls. It. And I, and I suspect that at this particular moment it's still a bit uh, ambiguous and a bit vague as to which way uh, they're going. Now, if all of this is the case, if this is going on, then this suggests that there is a fundamental reset going on in terms of China's economic development, that it's going to be much more oriented to social requirements as opposed to profitability. And it's interesting to see the responses in the West. Somebody like George Soros says, oh, they're going to come unstuck, totally unstuck, because they don't understand market economics, and they're going against that, and they're going to lose the result of it. Well, I'm not so sure. I think probably the problem in the West is that everybody does understand market economics. And it's a good job the Chinese at least are prepared to go against uh, market economics for social purposes. And if they're going against uh, market economics for social purposes, then this is at the same time going to lead into other things like, uh, for example, the push right now to start to really take on the climate change issue so there seems to be almost a revolutionary reconfiguration going on in China. But 
as Giovanni would say, it's not a done deal. You can't tell. You don't know where this may go. But it is going in a different direction now than it was just six months ago. And all the signs are then that this is a different kind of world which is being envisaged by China. 